All right. Hello, everybody. Where are we at? We're uh, September 30th already. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Oh, Teresa, I wasn't hearing you there. Oh, you're, you're really faint in the background. Not sure if it's... Yeah, I am hearing a tiny bit of sound, but it's like you're on the other side of the planet. Yeah, it's way out there. <laughs> anyway, all right. Anybody got anything they want to address here? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much better. Much better? Okay, great. I need remedial cartra. Okay. What that's part of... What part of the remedial would you like? <laughs> well, okay, I will start with the most advanced question first because it's probably okay. going to be of more help to the people on, on the call um, okay. than some of my others. The first thing is at the bottom of the product page or the, you know, the, the place where you input all the information on your product. Uh huh. There is something that says, put this in your opt-in page. It's like a block of um, code. Okay. Can you show me where that goes on the opt-in page? <clears throat> okay. So that is only if you want to add that to your website. If you're using a Kartra page, that's kind of irrelevant. Oh, okay. So if you're using a Kartra page, like, let's say you create the product and the product exists in there and you want to make a, a landing page where you sell the product. Mm -hmm. You can drop a button on the page, like a buy now button, and you just connect the buy now button to the product and you don't have to do any of that code. So okay. the, the code is the code is only there if you're like, let's say you have a WordPress site and you're putting information in there about the product and you want to put a buy button on the WordPress site. That's where you would put that. Okay. And okay. you can literally just like take that little piece of code and drop it in in place of the button and it will create the button for you and you click the button and now it loads up the Kartra checkout page. Okay. okay. So that, that's kind of how that works. A couple of weeks ago, you promised to show us how to put a Kartra um, offer or uh, opt-in or whatever on our WordPress website. Okay. Could you demonstrate that? Sure. I can do that. Let and to everybody else on the call, if uh, I'm monopolizing the call, just... <laughs> No, don't don't worry about it. Everybody, everybody likes this stuff. Like they love integration. So, no oh, worries. I love integration. If I could only figure it out. No worries at all. So I'm just going to get logged in here. I'll share my screen. Okay, so I'm in my Kartra account, and I've also got my WordPress site up here. And I've got Beaver Builder. So I use Beaver Builder for all my editing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go to a page that we can edit here. Let's see. Like, I don't, I don't think I have anything on this page yet. Yeah, nothing on this page. So <laughs> yeah, I noticed that about your website. It's like the cobbler's children with no e shoes. Exactly. Pages that need some work. <laughs> So this is just a blank page. So this is a perfect place for us to play. Okay. So I'm going to drop a row in here. So now that I have a row, I can, I can drop like pieces in. Like if I want to put a, a photo or let's say I want to put a text heading in here. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, I'll just make this our, our test page. So now, now we've got a heading, and then let's put some text in here. And I'm just gonna put some gobbledygook here. Uh -huh. 
that's not how you spell gobbledygook. All right. Well, that's how I spell it. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's put... Okay. Well, let's not put anything yet. So now we've got our page. Okay. We'll go over to Kartra. And let's say, let's find a product here. So I'll just go to, we'll just go to act. So over here, see how you have checkout? Yeah. I'm going to do my single price. And then this is the, this is the link to that button. So if I copy that link and I go over to here, now what I want to do is I want to put a button. So I'm going to drag the button over there. And the button, let's put order now. Okay. And then the link, I'm going to paste that link in there. And if you want to open it in a new window where it opens a new window, you can just check that button. All right. And I'll save it. So now we've got our page, our title, our gobbledygook, and our order now button. So if I publish that, it is now live. Okay. And see if we click that button, it opens a new window up here. And that is the Kartra page to order. Okay, so it's not like taking a Kartra page. It really is the Kartra checkout and the, uh, in the product. Yeah, so this was, an, this was an example of taking the checkout link and putting it on a button in your page. Mm-hmm. So if you want a different example, like here's, here's an example in Kartra of putting a form. Like this button right, right here is a Kartra form where it pops the Kartra form button up here and then schedule my session. Now that's going to add it to Kartra and take them right to my time trade to schedule. Right. <clears throat> so that's kind of how how that works and i can show you where where to get that okay like if we go to beaver builder we, we're going to edit so you can see how this works so if we edit that this is not a button mm -hmm. this is this is a html okay so this is html and this is the code that you probably saw over in kartra right so I just, I went up here, I went to the plus button and I picked the HTML thing and I slid that over and then I pasted that code in there. Got it. And then the button magically appears from the code. So does that, does, and this code is from a form. So over here in Kartra, it's not a product, it's a form. So when you create forms, see how it says Kartra pages or videos, yep. you can create the form so it's made only for Kartra pages, or you can create the form, like this one says embed on your site. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to embed it like I did with that one, you need to set the form to embed on your site. Got it. And then when you're creating the form, you can actually create the button inside the Kartra form and you can create the, the pop-up window for your opt-in. You, you can create, just like you can design a web page in Kartra. Mm -hmm. So that's, okay. that's kind of the two different ways that you can integrate Kartra into your website. You can either take a straight link and add it to a button or you can take the code and you can add the code to your site directly. Like, for instance, the help desk, if you go over to my site, let me close, let me close this out here. This card changes because I didn't make any. But when my site loads, notice this little guy here, the need help button. Right. That is Kartra. 
that's my Kartra help desk. So I integrated that from, you know, right into the site from Kartra. Uh -huh. So the way I did that, I go to the help desk and that's my dominator support. So you go over here and you say, get link. And then you just, okay. And there's the embed and it says right here, embed this code in the body of your web page. So okay. that, that code, you would just copy it and then you paste okay. that into the body of your website. Okay. <clears throat> so um, so to, you would paste it where? So to do that, you would have to go. It, you don't do that early in Beaver Builder. You go into pages. <laughs> See this, is, this is a little trickier here. All right. You would go into the pages and do it in here. And I did it with a plugin. Let me see if I can find the plugin that I used for this. Okay, see this plugin, insert headers and footers? Okay. I downloaded and installed that plugin because I don't like code. <laughs> I like things point and click easy. Uh -huh. So in the header, this is where you can put, see where it says scripts and footer? Oh, There's my okay. Kartra help desk right there. And then it just showed that a uh, graphic shows up as your help desk. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so that's how I put it in. And I put this in a global header. So this is, this is like a global header. So it'll go on all the pages. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's no matter. More advanced than I'm even attempting to be right now. All I want <laughs> to do is just create a simple opt-in for um, a freebie. Okay. The other thing, while I'm here, while I'm showing you this right now, okay. this headers and footers, this is also where you would put your Facebook pixel. If you wanted a retargeting pixel and it says put it in the header, you would just drop it in here. Scripts and header, scripts and body, scripts and footer. Does that make sense? Or is okay, that? Okay, so you'd put it in all three places? No, no, no. You would just put it where it tells you to put it. Oh, okay. Oh, got like, it. Like when you generate your, your Facebook pixel code, it'll tell you place this in the header or place this in the footer. Or, you know, got it'll it. tell you where to put it. All righty. All righty. And then That's you good. just pop it in there. There's also plugins specifically for retargeting pixels, you know. This one, I got this one because this will let me put anything anywhere I want. So it was a better, better option for me. Hmm. But anyway, that's, that's how you get those into, your, into the code of your WordPress site. Mm -hmm. Usually the, the tracking pixels, like your Facebook pixel and whatnot that he was talking about, though, it's not going to be a global setting. You're going to want to do that individual page because it's going to track which page you've gone to. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, especially conversion pixels. Like sometimes you'll want to put the generic pixel on every page, but then you'll want conversion pixels on your thank you pages. That tells Facebook that somebody actually opted in. You can also put them on thank you pages of order. You know, when your order sends them to a thank you page, that's one of the big reasons why you create thank you pages so you can track conversions. That's how it does it right inside of uh, inside of Kartra itself. It tracks your conversions based on the conversions on the thank you pages. So when that when that page loads, it fires and it says somebody bought that product and we know who it was. <laughs> okay. So you can do lots of other things based on that. Like you can. Uh, you can put tags on, you can automate follow-up sequences, you can, you can do all kinds of stuff based on actions inside of Kartra. But anyway, that was some examples of how you can take some code, whether it be a form, a help desk, uh, calendars are the same way. If you've got a calendar, you can integrate the calendar also. This just gives you a link here. You can link directly to the calendar. So if you wanted to put a button on your site, like click here to schedule, 
you can do that pretty easy okay. mm. <clears throat> but that's there's really only two ways you're either going to integrate a link on a button or you're going to integrate the the code to create the button so like the code on the help desk that's code to create a button uh, the code on the forms that's code to create a button on products that's a link to put on a button the calendar was a link to put on a button so anyway that's uh, that's how the that's how the integration happens wonderful thank you yeah absolutely okay if so nobody else has a question i've got one more yeah well we're in Kartra. go go for it okay i like i said i was i'm just trying to do simple list building freebie kinds of things and i was using one of their available campaigns the simple list builder one of the things that i noticed is that in the um well first of all there are like four pages and really you only need two and you just what do you do with the other two just get rid of them in in where now in the list in the av available available um campaigns there's one called simple list builder oh gotcha okay so under campaigns and it's probably way down on the bottom because it's like the most rudimentary one <laughs> okay yeah they keep they've they keep adding they're adding show more it's still it's, it's below okay simple list okay, builder. so there you go so just and okay so they have four pages one tag one list a sequence and a form right so, so I'm, that... my i can't get my head around the logic of this whole thing okay so what happens here <clears throat> you probably have an intro page the intro page has a form on it right so the form has a thank you page so that's page number two right when they opt in on the form they get a tag and they get placed mm -hmm. on a list mm -hmm. and it more than likely follow fires a follow-up sequence mm -hmm. exactly and the follow-up sequence, this is just my guess because I haven't seen this, but my, my guess is the follow-up sequence probably has links to two more pages. No, actually it has links to two emails. Okay. But in the emails, are there links to pages? No. So what are the four pages? There are, there's a opt-in page, so initial landing page, I guess. Okay. Thank you page. And then a two step page that I guess what happens is you send people to the page, they say, I want this thing. And then it goes to the form, another page that just has the form on it. Okay. It says, send it to me. Okay. And there are two pages like that. So okay. my presumption was Oh that yeah, that's probably kind of sloppy. Yeah, well it gets worse. <laughs> maybe that maybe I shouldn't be using these available campaigns. I'll I'll tell you what, I've when I first started in Kartra, I loaded a couple of these things and I wound up deleting them because they were they were kind of messy. And okay. what I found was it's it's so easy to build this campaign that you're you're probably not going to save much time by importing a campaign like this. The only place where it might save time is if they've created the structure of the pages and things like that. Mm. But it's so easy to create your own form. I mean, it literally takes you about two minutes to create a form. Oh, yeah, I know how to do that now. It, it takes you seconds to set up a list and a tag. A sequence is, is kind of an interesting process. It's a fun thing to learn. I truly think it's better for you to learn these steps 
than to import a campaign and not really know what's going on. And like when I did my, uh, my funnel camp training, that's exactly what I did was I, I walked through the steps of how to create these campaigns. Uh-huh. Super easy, super, super simple. <laughs> simple when you know how. <laughs> Well, it's, it's simple. Yeah, exactly. It's simple when you know what, how. That's why I created that training to show you exactly how. Well, I've been through it twice. And, and one, maybe what I'm doing is I'm, I'm overlapping trainings and maybe I ought to just stick to yours, go through it one more time and do something <laughs> from scratch because I, when yeah. I test this thing, it doesn't work. And I ended up with another little glitch or fly in the ointment, which was when I tried to, when I tested this and then opted in, I sent it to myself to another email address. I got a hard bounce on that email address. Okay. So that... I don't know what the problem is there, but Kartra is telling me don't email to this person. Okay. And it was your own email address in my own. Yeah. Okay. That is an idiosyncrasy inside of Kartra itself because Kartra has a bunch of different filtration in their email system. They're really, really particular about protecting their email reputation. So if you've got, you know, addresses that have bounced in the past or have had complaints or have had any kind of issues, or maybe they've been reported on another site, they cross-reference a whole bunch of different sources to find out what's a good email address and what's a bad one. And I've had actual customers. I've had literal customers that have bought my products and they get on that bounce list, on that blacklist, and I have to, I have to go in, create a ticket, a support ticket, and say, this is a customer, I need to email them, please whitelist them. And they do it, no problem. But it is, you know, that that's going to be the case with any commercial mailing system. It's not just Kartra. I mean, I, I called it an idiosyncrasy of Kartra, but it's an idiosyncrasy of email, commercial email. And it happens with all of them. Uh, I know people have been on Infusionsoft, and have had email deliverability. There's been some email deliverability on Kartra. Kartra is very transparent about it though. When you go to, uh, let's say you go to your, to your communication and you can see your leads. Uh -huh. If they're green, they're good. It tells you when they subscribe. Like this guy subscribed today. I can see he did a website evaluation. You know, here's another one, subscribe today. That's a website evaluation. Those are people going to my homepage, getting website evaluations. Got it. Now, here's one. There's a hard bounce. Yep. So he was blacklisted today because his email bounced. So this is an AOL email address. Probably doesn't exist or something. Or it could be somebody, could be this guy's a complainer. This guy could be a chronic complainer. And they blacklisted him because of that. Hmm. So on here, look at that, multiple spam complaints. Oh, that's interesting that they actually tell you the reason. Oh, yeah. If they have the reason, they'll, they'll tell you. And over here, you know, there's a why and there's, it'll tell you and the different. I read through that whole thing because I was mm -hmm. somewhat concerned. Yeah. Now, if it's a customer, like I said, all you have to do is you just you just create a ticket, a support ticket, and say, look, this is a customer. I need to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And they'll just whitelist them for you. Cool. So not Great. not a not a big deal. But anyway, that's that's like like I said, I like Kartra because it's transparent. It tells you what's going on with each one of your leads. So you know if you have to, if you've got to do something about it. And you can come up here in the advanced filters and you can, you can filter by these, uh, you know, by different tags. Okay. Yes. So you can say if they're somewhere in here, if I might've 
gone past it, but somewhere in here you can say if they're if they're blacklisted, and it could give you a list of them so you can see them all. Okay, uh, anyway. I'm not scared anymore then. So that's that's basically all that is. But the campaign should work, you know. When I I don't think I've created one yet that didn't work other than like, here's a common problem. I'll, I'll put the wrong thank you page in. So when the, when I fire the form, I go to the wrong thank you page. That's, that's, that's a common error I've run into myself because <laughs> I've got all these pages when it wants you to select the page, you know, you think you got the right one, but you've got two that look almost identical. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah. And, when you, there are several different ways to deliver your free thing. Yes. Bothers me because you can put a link on the thank you page or in the product setup, you can tell tell Kartra where to send the thing. Correct. So with that, you have a couple of different variations there. So you could, I could see how you could get confused on that. You could deliver something based on an opt-in. You could deliver something based on a product purchase. Those are two different types of delivery. <clears throat> so we'll talk about opt-in first. If you were going to create an, an opt-in page that was going to deliver like a free lead magnet, like download my free PDF that'll show you my blueprint to success, right? So they opt in on the thank you page. You can put the button to the link to download the PDF. I would also recommend that you send a follow-up email to that, like a thank you email. When you're setting up the form, it'll give you the ability to, to do a thank you email when somebody opts in. I always put the link to the thank you page for the download in the email because <clears throat> here's what will happen. <clears throat> somebody will opt in, the thank you page will come up, they'll close the window or something will happen and then it's gone and now they didn't, they didn't download it yet. And they're like, oh shit, you know, and you want them to download your free thing. You want them to have every opportunity to download that because that's your lead magnet. That's what's going to create their demand and desire to move to the next level with you. So it's always send them a follow-up email with, hey, thank you for opting in. I hope you enjoy the PDF. Um, in case you've lost it, here's the link again so you can go back and get it. I always do it in that type of format. So that way they, you know, there's, you never miss a beat. They always get what they need and you're always in front of them. Now you can also, if somebody's going to download something, I'm a little lazy on this, but I could be a lot better. If I, if I went over here to sequences, sequences are basically follow-up sequences. It's like when somebody raises their hand and said, yeah, I'd like your opt-in. I'd like your PDF. Mm -hmm. You should follow up with them. Technically, that would be like somebody asking you for a business card at a marketing event and you give it to them and you exchange cards and then you never follow up. That's not very effective because if you're depending on them to follow up and they're depending on you to follow up, that's not a match made in heaven right there. <laughs> So follow-up is the key. If you talk to any salesperson, they will tell you if without follow-up, you are dead in the water. This is no different. You know, I've always said things don't work differently online than they do in the real world. If it didn't work in the real world, it's not going to work over here either. So the fact that what works is follow-up this right here, this little button that's called sequences, that is the magic follow-up for you. So anybody that purchases a product, anybody that opts in, anybody that raises their hand in any way, shape, or form, it's your job to follow up with them. And sequences is how you do it. 
So when you click on the sequences button, you've got this big plus button over here to create a new sequence, but you can, you can create an unlimited amount of these sequences. And when you, when you create a new sequence, it's really easy to do. You just name it. I'll just name this test. And once you, once you start the sequence, you have to have something that fires it. So that's the first step. Come on, why are we not creating here? Oh, that one already exists. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe I, I clicked it twice. That's why it said it already exists. Uh -huh. Okay, so here you've got starting rules. So you have to have something that fires this. You could say, okay, somebody fills out an opt-in form, somebody gets a tag, somebody gets added to a list, somebody places an order. You can even fire a sequence based on them visiting a page. Even if they don't opt in, they just visit the page and you can start a sequence. That's really cool. Usually I'll, I'll do an opt-in form and I'll just say, okay, if somebody comes to my Elvis funnel opt-in, that's going to fire the sequence. So when they opt in in that form, we, we trigger the sequence. So that's my starting rule. So next, what do we want to do next? Here's your option of things over here that you can do. Typically, I'll send an email. So you just drag that over to the palette. And you can say, I want to send it immediately. So as soon as they opt in, you can send it. Or you, you can say, I want to wait. I want to wait like one hour. I don't want to hammer them over the head right away because they already got a follow-up email. So I'm going to wait an hour. And then here, I never, they put this in as an option. I never really use this. It's, it's in case like you don't want to send something on a Sunday. So it would basically send it an hour, but not on Sunday. Like it'll wait till Monday and then send it. You can also do allowed time. Like these things can only send during business hours. I never do that. I figure if somebody opts in at a particular time, that's their schedule. Why would I not want to operate on their schedule? They come in on a Sunday, I'm open for business. That's the beauty of having an automated system. If your customer's up at two o'clock in the morning, you're open for business. That, that's the beauty of this. So I don't mess with this. I say anytime, any day, I'm on your schedule. I'm at your beck and call. <laughs> so now you have to name your broadcast. You pick a mailer. I just use my standard mailer. Now, for recipients, basically, I just want to send this to anyone that reaches this step. If they're not in the GDPR, I want to prompt them to opt into that because that's for legal reasons. I, I'm personally too lazy for split tests, so I just want a single email. And then you start typing it out. Put your subject in there. And then over here, I want to show you guys this. This is really cool. You can write an email and you can use these dynamic variables where you can plug in their first name. I actually went into the advanced and I've started using templates now. So I'm using design templates. And I created my own template. So I can just drag that template over and now it's all formatted which is really cool. I put my signature in there. I customized this thing. But instead of dear user, I want to go back to the variables and I want to plug their first name in there. So all you do is just paste that little code in there and then it's going to say dear John or dear Lisa or whatever, whatever their first name is. It's just going to plug it in there. And then you can type your email and away you go.
So I love these templates and that you find that under the advanced tab. And they have, uh, they have full templates here. They have a whole, just like pages, they've got a whole bunch of formatted email templates that you could use. I personally found the, a lot of these were just way too busy for me. I was scrolling through, I found the last one I liked. I just took that image out and that was how I based my template to create one. You know, once you do it, like once you get your template the way you want it, you can save it as your own template, which is what I did. That's what you guys saw that I did up here. I don't use the full templates, I use my templates. So when you save a template, it's gonna put it in the my templates category here. I've got two in there. I've got this one I started creating for somebody that abandons the cart. I send them a follow-up email. It says your cart looks lonely. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm basically, I stole this right out of Kartra. Kartra uses this templates. They say, finish what you carted. So it's a, it's a cool little play on words. So anyway, once you get your email dialed in the way you want it, you click next. And then here's where you can put an automation. You can put an automation that says, if they open the email and they click a link, let's cancel this sequence and let's move them into another one. You can say, if they don't click the link, you can do something else with them. I, again, I'm a little lazy, so I typically don't put automations to this, but you can. You can get, like, you can get as advanced as you want with Kartra. I, I use a lot of the stuff, but not all of it. Now, notice it's, I just created this one and it's inactive. So the first thing you want to do is you want to activate it and then you have to connect it. This is not intuitive. This is a little bit weird, but it's sitting out here, but it's not connected to anything. So you have to connect it. Now that it's connected and it's active, as soon as the starting rule fires, this will fire as well. Now, if you want another one, you just drag another one down here. And same thing, you just go through the same steps. You typically never want them to fire right after the previous step. Like you might want this one, wait for one day. You know, send this the next day. Or if you're doing, like let's say you're doing an event and you have a specific trigger date for your event, you might want these emails to fire on specific dates. Like you might wanna send an email the Friday before your Saturday event. So you can set a specific date here. So it's very flexible. It's, it's, it'll pretty much do anything you want it to do. And uh, just kinda of go through the, through the motions here, I won't, spend time doing all that, but you can see, you can connect as many of these as you want. I have one of these sequences. I actually, I opted into Kartra. I bounced out of their cart because I wanted to see their follow-up sequence. I wanted to see their cart abandonment sequence. And I think I got 17 emails. I copied each and every one of them to create my own sequence. And I'm looking at it when it's done. I'm like, Oh my God, that was a lot of work. <laughs> but luckily I didn't have to do it. I just copied their shit and put it in. And I'm like, I was really thankful that they did that. If you've got a competitor, opt into their stuff, see what they send you, copy it and paste it in and make it your own. You know, let them do the heavy lifting for you. Obviously use what you've learned in ACT to tune it up and make it better but let them do the heavy lifting. You know, there's nothing worse than blank page syndrome. If you're starting a new campaign and you know, hey, I need five follow-up emails and you got five blank pages looking at you, that's a little ominous. That's a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. How much easier would that be to opt into your competitor, take theirs, paste it in, and then now it's not a blank page. You're just editing. It's a lot easier. <laughs> so that's like one of my little little tricks to be as lazy as I like to be and get away with it. <laughs> so once you're done with a sequence, you just hit done and exit and it will add it to your list of sequences. 
Now you can see how many active leads you've got in each sequence. You can pause them. You know, if that, if you don't, uh, you can clone it. This is another really cool thing. Let's say you get a sequence done for a campaign and you've got another campaign you want to do that's almost identical, just a different avatar. It's selling the same thing. It's just little language tweaks. You know, you can, you can shift them over. So that's a really, uh, really powerful, cool feature. Like you can see, this is that one I was talking about, Act Abandon. I've got it on pause right now because I haven't gone through and, you know, edited all the emails. But I got them all copied in there. So I'll show you, show you what it looks like. So this one I've got sending three hours. So the triggers, they abandon the cart. Three hours later, I send the first email. One day later, one day after that, one day after that, one day after that. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I didn't write any of those. You know, if you, if you pop them open, you can see, let's see. Oh, it just gives you the details. I guess you have to really open it up to see the, the actual email. Okay, but what happens when somebody goes back to their cart in a couple of days and purchases from you or empties the cart? Okay, great question. Let me just show you this one. So that this is one of the emails. So again, I just need to just need to edit that. So okay, so let me answer that question because that is a great question, and you definitely want to deal with that situation. That's the next button over, automations. So if somebody purchases a product, like let's say you've got a sequence set up for a cart abandonment. Let's say we want to, we say lead, we're looking for buys a product. Okay, so the customer buys a product. Let's say they buy ACT and they do it at any price point. They buy it at any price point. That's my if. This is automations are an if then statement. So my if is anybody, if you buy the ACT program, then what I want to do is I want to unsubscribe you from the sequence and the sequence being the ACT abandon. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Super simple. It's if then. So if somebody orders the product, let's take them out of that sequence. We can also say, and let's not just take them out of the sequence. Let's subscribe them to another sequence. Let's put them in. And again, it, it kind of makes me sick how lazy I am. <laughs> Smart. I should, I I'm should, lazy. well, now I'm lazy. <laughs> There's no way around it. If I weren't lazy, I would have already had a sequence for act fulfillment, like to help people go through the act program. I should have a sequence set up that when somebody orders my product, I, I give them the thank you email. I give them access to the program. But that's really where my sequence stops. I should have a full follow-up sequence that follows up with them every couple of days to, you know, help answer their questions, help lead them through the program and all that. So in a perfect world, I would say remove them from my abandoned sequence and add them to my fulfillment sequence because they purchased my product. I should treat them better. You know, I do these calls, I do the weekly calls, so that's kind of my way out. That's that's how I, you know, fulfill on that because I'm here for you guys for whatever you need. But I could do a better job. I I, I should be a better example for you guys. <laughs> Sorry. My advice to you is stop shooting on yourself. I yeah, I shit on myself a lot. <laughs> John, can I go back in and ask you something about where you were in there? Sure, absolutely. 
uh, you did say that in order to uh, start this off, you can get it to where they, one of the actions that started the sequence um, was like they, they didn't opt in or they, they come on a page. So like in my case, I'm creating pages with video, um, but you said they didn't opt in. You can start that sequence. How does that work? And is that okay. possible? Yes, it's absolutely possible. You can't, I believe you can even do like if they watched a video to a certain point. You can yeah, but you said before they opted in. That's my key there. I want to know Correct. how you do it before they opted in. Okay. So back into sequences. Let's go back to our test sequence here. Okay. So we're going to edit the starting rule. And that is visit a page. So you can select a Kartra page or an external page. I don't know how the hell they do that. I want to know that one there. But let's say an external page. No particular category. Oh, okay. And I may not be set up for external pages for some reason. Mm. I may, there might be something in there that I, that you have to set up, but let's say we're doing, going to do a Kartra page. Mm -hmm. Most of us have Kartra pages anyway. I'll do act webinar. Let's see. So I'll do the, okay. So this is my opt-in page right here. Successful marketing campaign elements. So if I add that lead visits page, it's going to do whatever I want to do next. And now notice I've got two of them here. I've got the first action and I've got the second action. So starting rules, it could be either or. If they opt in, perfect. If they land on the page, perfect. Starts the sequence. You can also do add a tag. Like you could, you could add a tag to them. Here's one small caveat to this. The, and, and this is probably going to answer your question. There's no way that it can do this if they haven't opted into your, into something that you've got and they're in the Kartra universe. That's the answer to the question right there. Yeah. So I am not completely I'm not completely positive about this, but I believe if they've opted into Kartra globally anywhere, yeah, I believe it will it will pull them in, create them as a lead, and track them for you. So, because that's what I was wondering. Suppose they're in your system on Kartra, all right, I've, and they come to my page and don't opt in. Is that's what I wanted to know if it was tracking it? Because that I would believe, be an interesting thing. I believe it will because Kartra. Kartra runs on a single database. So it's just like Infusionsoft in the very back end. It's one big monster jumbo database. And all those leads, like a lead that is targeted to you, basically is, has got a tag. But that lead is the same lead inside the system. That's how, that's how they can do it with the affiliates. They can assign an affiliate to multiple different accounts that's or, or in my case that's how they figured out that you know i mean once they fixed my affiliate problem i was uh, approved for everybody's yes exactly I had three of them i wasn't approved for as soon as you helped me get that one fixed yeah every other one of them popped open yeah exactly that is exactly how it works because it is it's one big global database so if a lead is in there and they land on a page you know, the, in, a, in an ideal world, Kartra would have everyone on the planet in their database. So this would work. That is probably how it works on pages outside of Kartra too. Because if you're on another page and I load a, a Kartra window, it recognizes whoever was, you know, in the Kartra system through that IP. Like when I use examples and I pull up pages, like if I go... I go back to my home page and I click this. It's automatically loading the last guy I put in here. Like I put this in manually because I was talking to him on the phone and he gave me his info and I just plugged it in for him. So it's now thinking that I'm him. It's remembering me. 
Mm-hmm. So like if, if I went to any other Kartra page, like I could go to your Kartra page and pop up your window, it's going to populate that information because it, it associates that user. So okay. it's, it's really cool in that aspect. Another thing that that will do for you, I'll get out of here, but in, if you go into products, one of the settings when you're setting up the product checkout is you can do, I think they call it fast checkout or quick checkout or something. It will pre-populate all their information for them so they don't have to do it. As long as they're in the system, it, it recognizes them. So it's really cool. It's really awesome. Might kind of flip some people out that think people are watching them, but <laughs> I guess that's the, that's yeah, just like, the cost. I always wondered if it might get into some people going, Hey, that was uh, you know I mean? Oh, that's a, that's a breach of security. How'd you get my, how'd you get my information? But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's definitely, definitely those people out there for sure. That's the, no doubt about it. All right. So Teresa, what else, what else can I answer for you in here? Uh, John, if you don't mind, I've got a question. Sure. Go ahead. This Michael Brevet. Uh, I'm the one that sent you the email about uh, the, uh, what you would do sort of look over your shoulder for the keyword wholesale pepper sprays. Oh yeah. Yeah. You want to do that one? Yeah. If you don't mind switching gears. Okay. Were we done with you, Teresa? Oh yes. Thank you very much. All right. Perfect. And then, and then I have my hand up for a Kartra question that I'll do after, if that's okay. Okay. Well, you, can go, you can go ahead and ask it now. Oh, I, I, oh, okay. Go ahead while we're here, Lisa. Okay. Sorry. So in memberships, um, and thank you for the template and everything's going really well. And my course launches tomorrow and please everybody, if you're in Craig's group, uh, go into the, I'm looking for some beta testers, go into that, uh, mastermind group um so here's the thing the home page does not have a drop down and i love that is there any way to get rid of the drop down on the other pages inside the membership yes yes absolutely oh, please tell me absolutely because my karcher person who i really want her to be on here but says she there's no way <laughs> and I'm like, I know there's a way. John will know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I'll show you where they come from. They're easy to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, I just want people to be able to click on the main tab and then have it appear. Okay, so you launch the builder. Yep, I'm in there now. And you're talking about these rollouts. Yep. Okay, so any one of those rollouts can be eliminated. Right. Okay. Cause I've been in there and she said, well, then the content page will not even show up. So, oh, yeah. I think you have to have one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you see the home page doesn't have one. It's the home page. Yeah. The home page is, is basically that's your default. That's your log. Right. right. But over here, let's see. Let's see if we can edit this. You say no subcategories. Right. And yet. But what you have to have, like like the quick start, it's yeah. automatically by default created. Got it. And then you just, you add your content to it. Yeah. So the answer is there's always a pull down and they have to click on that as two. Yeah. See this. They have to have at least one, I guess. All right. So that's that answer. But uh, all of these, these are just, these are just added. Uh, they call them posts. Got it. So Got when it. you add a post, it adds another tree onto the thing. And then I discovered something by accident last night for the uh, image files for uh, you know pages. There's a library for image files for pages that stays there. So once you upload an image or a graphic to use in a page, it's always there. Yes. And I discovered it has to stay there. Because I've, I've uploaded things, used them in pages, and then went to save space, delete them. Mm -hmm. Because there doesn't, because the question is, is there doesn't seem to be a way to organize the images. They're just done by the last image you, and so that's my question, is there a way to organize those images? Because I don't think so. I haven't seen it. Do you know where to find the images? 
this is something that drove me crazy of where in the hell are all those images and documents and stuff. Like when you upload a, a PDF file, I could never find them. Yeah, me neither. Yes, please they tell are, me. <laughs> they're under memberships. Yeah. Files. Okay, yes. So there's like your PDFs, any PDFs you upload, this is where they're going to be hosted. Got it. So but I, images? Images, where were the images? I mean, there should be a, like a library. Yeah, the, the library is accessible through pages. Basically, yeah. any, anywhere uh, where you can add an image, that's the library that's is the accessible library. through there. Yeah. But say I've been at, say I three years in or five years in or even one year in, I, you know, my creatives think, love to see images. Yeah. I, I got to just scroll down. There's no organizational tool. Not that I've seen. I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that yet. Okay. And then the last thing is the organization for this stuff. I know that I saw somewhere that we could put things into a folder, but I don't know where that exists because I never see that. Okay, so any page, like let's say you've got, you know, a thousand pages. Mm -hmm. When you go to edit your page, you put them in a category. So you can create and manage your categories. So you can do it with pages. So like, like you'll notice, oh, I stopped sharing here, I think. Can I go back in and create a category after the fact and then? Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Like this one has a rainmaker category. I can go in here and I can manage the categories and I can add, you know, a new category here and assign that page to it. So yes, you can do it after the fact. Oh, so I can create a category and then put a page into that category from that window instead Correct. of going into each individual page. Correct. Awesome. Yep. How did you get to the create the category part? Okay. So, oops, I, I went into edit the page here. So let me back out of that. Let me return. Okay. So any page in here, you just go to edit. Oh, I do have to go into the page. Oh, any when, page. Okay. When you click on edit, you can, uh -huh. you can do it basically right here. And you add a new also, category. You can also do them by site. This is a really cool idea. I haven't got my head wrapped around it yet. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> so. But I should because it's, it's very powerful because with a site, you can create a site template that has headers and footers on it. So any content that you put in will have that same header and footer if it's part of that site. Later on, like let's say, let's say you've got a bunch of pages that's a collection of pages. You call it a site and they all have the same footer and it turns from 2020 to 2021 and you wanna go in and update your copyright year. That's a real pain in the ass if you got 50 pages. So in sites, you can go in and edit it in the template and it'll do it across the whole site. So it's a good thing. I need to get my head wrapped around it and then I can kind of share more how it works, but that's the, that's the premise behind it. So you just said something about updating your copyright year. I thought that if something was like, I just had a graphic uh, created that I said, Oh, put the copyright as 2018 so that it looks like I've had this for two years. Well, I'm talking about the site itself. What happens with out-of-date sites, when somebody comes to your site, like especially if you're selling stuff, and they see an old copyright date, they think the site's been abandoned. They do not see it as being current. Oh. So if you have old dates on your site, that's not good for just for the psychology of sales. Like I don't have a copyright date on my site at all. Okay, well, that's better than having an old one. <laughs> Understood. Okay. That is better than having an old one. So, But the thought that I've had this, because I've had this template forever, I just had it put into a beautiful infographic, thanks to your wonderful um, Fiverr guy <laughs> or okay. girl. Is Sadie Twiggs a girl or a guy? I think she's a girl. Okay. I, I think, I, you know, you never know. I could ask her. She's awesome. <laughs> never, never know these days, but... Yeah, she's Thanks. really cool. Great human resource, guys. Recommend Sadie Twiggs on yeah. Fiverr. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, John. I think she's a she and she's awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let me go over. We're going to switch gears now. 
and uh, let me get some get some different stuff open here and we'll we'll play in a different arena i just got to find where it, <laughs> where it all is okay all right so let me share my screen again okay and it was this was for michael right right okay he's still with us awesome so i'm going to go into scm rush and this is how i basically do anything i'm i'm going through site pop now this is setting up an optimization to send search signals to a website that will effectively train google's algorithm to know that the site belongs at the top so what was the domain again Safe, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the page you want the page or the just the domain? Uh, just the domain. It's safetytechnology.org. O R G. S A F E T Y. Technology. Okay. Dot org. Uh huh. Dot org. Okay. Did I get that right? Yes. Safetytechnology.org. Okay. I'm in SEM Rush right now. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking to see if there's any traction on keywords on this domain. And there is. There's 207 keywords on this domain. Now, I know you said that this particular keyword you're trying to hit is on page two. But I'm assuming that you didn't know that here, just as you know, from a training aspect, if you didn't know, this is how I do it. So I go into SEM Rush, I'll put the, the domain in here, not a page, a specific domain, because I want to know everything that's going on on this domain. Down here under top organic keywords, it's showing 180. So I can go to view the details. And what I'm looking for, are the perfect keywords to try and boost are, are keywords that are on page two and page three, because they're what I call traction keywords. Google already recognizes the site for them. It's already valued them on page two, but we need them on page one. So we're gonna send extra search signals in to effectively move those up. So what was the keyword that you were shooting for? Uh, wholesale pepper sprays. Okay. Or pepper spray. Wholesale pepper spray. pepper spray. Okay. So let's see if we see that in here. Is there a search, is there a search feature? Uh, I don't think so. But what I can do, I can make this easy. I can export it. That way we can use uh, Excel to search. Uh, all right, so let's enable editing. And this might, you know, look a little technical for some of you guys, and it might be. <laughs> so I'm going to sort, and I'll sort by keyword, A to Z. And we're looking for wholesale. Okay, I don't see wholesale pepper spray in here. Yeah, it's uh, it's on this it's on, on where I am. It's on the second page. Okay, this does not mean this is everything. This is just like the main ones that it comes up with. So I will go to. I think I saw pepper spray wholesale. We could try that. Okay, let's see here. Pepper spray, wholesale suppliers? Mm, maybe, I thought I saw pepper spray wholesale, but I guess I didn't. Okay, so this one, you, you're actually pepper spray wholesale suppliers at number four. Yeah. So you're already number four on that. Now when we do these search signals on any other keywords, it's probably gonna push that one up as well, even if we don't use that one specifically. That's kind of, that's the cool thing about sending search signals is it solidifies what Google thinks about your site. 
gives it more authority and it will rank it higher. So let's see here. Is pepper spray one word or two? Two words, P-E-P-P-E-R. There it is, yeah. Okay, I can put that. <clears throat> Let's open another window here and do it there. Okay. What was the domain again? It was technology.org. Technology. Okay, so we're looking for safetytechnology.org. We'll go to page, you say it was on page two? For me it is, yeah. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay, so that's another way you can verify it here. That's one thing about SEM Rush. It's a great program, but it doesn't tell you everything. It's not 100% all the time. So the fact that this one here is on page two, that makes it a perfect keyword to do what we're about to do. Okay, so let's see here. And what was your last name again? My last name? Yeah. Gravett, G-R-A-V-E-T-T-E. -E. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to log into your account. Okay. And we will just set up a new campaign here. I was just testing this to see, like on wholesale stun guns, how many searches do I have on that one? You scroll down just a little bit, 28. Yeah, and 28 I so far. Yesterday, I think. Okay. Uh, and I, I haven't set up, see what I really would like from you, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and upgrade. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I would like to know, like, if you were going to do this for a client, how many devices would you use? How okay. many searches would you send? How many keyword phrases would you use? Okay, perfect. So back over here, if we go back over to SCM Rush, we look at the volume. <clears throat> like for safety technology, there's a volume of 880 searches a month. So the more volume of searches there are for a particular keyword, the more searches you're going to need to send to show up on the radar. Okay. Now, if there was like, let's say this one here, safety technology org, there's only 40 searches a month there. So if you had a bunch of terms that only had like low search volume, that's where I would use far less searches because you don't want to do anything crazy here. Is what, there a ratio that you have in the back of your head that you use? What, what Chris says, Chris does these for some real high-end customers that have a ton of volume of traffic already, and they're super competitive keywords. He's got some clients where he's focused on those, and he uses, I believe it's 60%. Like if, if there's a thousand, if there's a thousand over here, he will try and shoot about 600 at that. And that's, again, that's based on a site that's seasoned, that's got a bunch of volume of traffic already, so it's not like standing out like a sore thumb. Now that's a month per month, right? Per month, yes. These so are, this is something, a that's, something that's got, let's say, 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. So, so you're if only you're looking at like two or three a month? If I was going to do 30, what I would do is over in the campaign over here, I would put 12 keywords in. And right, okay. we, we always recommend that you do two devices on each project and get right. 500 searches a month. Right. Even on a new site, the only difference is I would put more keywords so it spreads the load across them. Like, like for instance, if we were to take, if we were to take the 500 searches, divide it by 12 keywords, that's 41 searches a month on average for each one. Okay. That's not an outrageous amount, even if it's a low volume keyword. So that's the safe way to do it. Now, let's say you had one keyword that was more competitive and you had some other ones you wanted to do. You could put the one keyword that you want more searches in, just put it in multiple times. With like, a 
with SM Rush, if it doesn't <clears throat> list yours, can you put the actual keyword in? It'll give you the searches. Like if it's not listed there. Yes. Uh, we put in wholesale pepper spray someplace. Yeah, let's try that here. I think it's going to take us to a different window. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't really give anything there. Oh, there. What's that total volume? Oh, that's variations. Never mind. No, variations is 72. That is the volume, 230. So there's 230 searches a month for that. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. So 230 times 0. 0.6 so you could you could safely send 138 searches a month to that keyword all right and so if i'm doing 500 then i would use i'd add at least two or three other keywords along with it yeah is that it that's about right yep okay well then what but that's just with two if in other words if i had five or six devices what would i do what you could do there is you could add more keywords. You could, you could also set up multiple projects as well. You could control this. You can control it really as, as much as you want by, by breaking up the number of keywords and the number of searches and the number of times you put the same keyword in. Like, like let's say out of 500, if you're going to do two devices and you're going to get 500 searches a month, and you wanted, you wanted 250 of those searches to go to one keyword, you would put that keyword in half of the times. Like if you were using eight keywords, you'd make sure that that keyword was in four times. If you were using 12 keywords, you'd make sure it was in six times. And then the other ones, you can vary them for lower amounts. Does that, does that make sense? Sort of, but could you go ahead and walk through? Let's say I don't have the room. How do I upgrade real quickly? Is there a way to upgrade with you on the, on the phone so I have more room in there? Yeah, yeah. I was just putting that in to test it, but I, I, to be honest with you, I've got, I've got uh, probably over a hundred websites selling these type of products. Okay. So I'm going to be but, doing using this a lot. So. So you're pro you're probably going to want the agency version anyway, yes. but for. For now, let's, uh, let me do this. Okay, let me, let me go back here. Can you use the, my credit card information you already have or do I need to put it in again? Well, what I'm gonna do for you for right now is I'm just gonna move you up to pro. So you've got 10 to play with. Okay. Oh, and I'll do that just as a thank you for letting me use you as a guinea pig on here. And then I'll go in when we get off the call, I'll go in and, uh, and order the agency. Yeah, I can send you another link where you can upgrade and okay, you can perfect. do that when you're ready. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, so that's pretty much so what, how you, how you well, play well, the yeah, game. What would you do now? What would you do now? You've got wholesale pepper spray with 230 searches. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? If you wanted to, you've got 250, you've got 250 searches on the single device. So if you wanted to do like 125 searches to that pepper spray, you could basically set up a campaign with two keywords and you'd be, you'd be right about there. I always like more searches. Let me ask you this on that site. How much traffic is on that site to begin with? Is that a new site with not oh, no. very much going on or no, it's, 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 it's been around for a while. Okay. Then I would, I would go 500 searches right out of the gate. No questions asked. Two or three keywords. I did two or three <laughs> keywords. Yeah. How many devices? That would be two devices. Every device you add adds 250 searches. Yeah. But what I'm getting at, if I want to go ahead and get a set up block of 10 phones using your recommendations of phones to get, so okay. I've got 10 devices plus my computer. So let's say a total of 11. Mm -hmm. If I wanted, is there any way to push it more? Or oh, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to understand. Absolutely. Every, now, in the, in the pro version and the basic version, 
each project is limited to 500 searches, but you can have multiple projects. Projects, right. In the agency version, you can you can adjust the amount. Like you could have one project with 5,000 searches if you wanted to. I think you've got 25,000 allotment in the agency version, and you could put that all on one campaign if you wanted to. You would have to have the you know the right number of devices to justify it, but you could do that. Now, what happens if I get it where I want it? Do I have to keep it up, or if I let go of it, it's going to drop back down? Yes, it's you're gonna have to keep you're gonna have to maintain it's almost like a fake it till you make it. What's gonna happen when you start sending these signals in? It's gonna you're gonna get a boost in traffic because you're gonna get a boost in ranking. As the as the traffic comes up and it gets more trusted, what you what I usually tell people to do is I say take the keywords that you were pushing before and just edit them out. What, what happens when you push particular keywords up, it's kind of like the tide rises in the harbor. All the ships rise with it. And it's the same thing with your keywords. When you start getting more and more authoritative inside Google and those keywords you're pushing start to rank, it's going to drag a whole bunch of other ones up with it. Possibly even more competitive keywords are going to start showing up as traction keywords. So now you can you can safely go back and start pushing those other new traction keywords up and you just keep snowballing it. Okay, so in other words, let's say I have three keywords and I get to the first page, I get the number one, number two, number three. Mm -hmm. so what I would do is remove those but add three other relative keywords. Yeah, you could you could swap them out or you can add more projects, you know, whichever way you want. But just swapping them out is fine. I don't think you're going to lose too much on the ones that you've already pushed up as long as you continuously keep sending those search signals in. Okay. So it doesn't have to be the exact keyword phrase. No. It could be no. a relative one. Okay. It could be a relative one. Yeah. I always try and push on the traction ones. So the traction ones, you push them up. And like I say, when the, when the tide rises, it pulls the other ones up with it. And then you've got new ones popping up into that, that target zone where you can push them up. Well, what do you consider the traction ones? Like if you go to SEM Rush, just the ones on the first and second page or anything the, that SEM Rush shows you? Usually I'll take the second and third page as my primaries. If I find good ones in there, I'll go for those. Sometimes I'll find one that's on four or five, you know, maybe page six. And, you know, if it's a really good one, I'll say, oh, yeah, let's throw some stuff at this and see what happens. There's not really a, a, a right or wrong to this. To describe a uh, attraction word. That's what I'm getting at. Attraction word is any keyword that would be valuable to you that's on page two, three, or beyond. Okay. It's, right. it's Google. Google has already got you in traction. They've already recognized you for it. It's just not on the first page yet. And I can't, I've had the hardest time with wholesale stun guns and wholesale pepper spray. <laughs> I've had a lot of people looking at it and I cannot seem to get high on the first page. Well, hopefully this is all you're missing. I, I mean, so there's a lot of people that they've done a ton of optimization to get to page two and they're stuck there. Right. And it could just be the difference between not having the brand recognition. Well, I keep That's, wondering if it's a penalty thing, see, too. No, no, no. If you're on page two, you're not penalized. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe for something little that just won't me go, won't let me go past that. No, no, no. You're you're not penalized on well, page. Google two. doesn't like me for some reason. <laughs> it's not that. It's it's just they like somebody else better. Better. You've got millions of people competing for the same space. Well, the and, guy who's number one for wholesale stun guns is it's wholesale blades i think uh he jumped up there oh months and months ago and for every algorithm that's come along he hasn't budged mm -hmm. if you look at everything I, about him he doesn't have a lot of uh, uh content he doesn't have a lot of backlinks domain authority like mine's higher than his but for some reason he's on number one and i can't figure out why do do people know his brand name? I never even heard of him until he got up there. Yeah, I I would say he's doing. I've been doing this for thirty four years. I, I was I was back when I was number one on Alta Vista all the time. 
I would say he's doing something to get brand recognition. Oh, yeah. He's doing something, but I don't know what it is. Because here's, here's the deal. You can look at just about any search phrase there is out there right now. And what you're going to find is you're going to have major brand names coming up to the top for not really any good reason. The reason is they've got the brand recognition. People are searching the brand in connection with the keyword. So that's another thing that you might want to try is you might want to try connecting that particular keyword, that wholesale pepper spray to your brand name. Right. I've done safety technology, yeah. wholesale stun guns, wholesale pepper spray. I've done that, but I will also, I can do it this way too. With your I would tool. do it with search too. Yeah. Because when people start sending those signals to Google, what they're saying is they're saying, I know specifically what I want. And I know specifically who has it. Please give me that result. You know, I think it'd be, a, even though Google says no on keywords and domain names, I think we all know that's bullshit. Yeah, it's it's a factor. Wholesale, see, in his domain name. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a factor. I know it is. Google keeps saying it's not, but I know it is. Yeah, no, there's there's no doubt. There's no doubt it is a it is a factor. How big a two, factor? Number two has wholesale in the domain name. Mm -hmm. See, so so all right. So what that does that creates if somebody knows the domain name and they you know that's sending those search signals for brand. That's exactly what it is. That, that's brand. I know. So it's brand signals. It's connecting your, your brand signal, your brand awareness to a particular keyword. That's a huge trust factor for Google right now. I know, but I don't have wholesale in my domain name. Well, it doesn't matter. You have a, you have a, a brand name. If you just connect your brand name to the keyword, the keyword, you know, the, the word is in the keyword anyway. You want the keyword connected to your brand name. That's what's going to get you the trust factor. They have that benefit that their, their brand name is the keyword, so it's all combined. They get, they're getting that free ride anyway. So right. you, just, you just have to compensate and make up for that, and SitePop's a perfect tool to help you do that. Okay. So, all right, i got to so, order a bunch of phones, and I've got to order. <laughs> so send me, the, uh, send me the link for the agency, okay? Okay. Will do. And I will let you get back to other people. I've dominated enough of your time. Oh, no worries. No, this is all good. I, I all right. tell everybody, whatever you're stuck on, you know, it, it benefits other people. Some people will say, what the hell are they talking about? And, <laughs> and that's okay. You know, it's, this call is for everybody at, at any level. So sometimes you'll be on here and somebody will be asking something that you've been through years ago. And, you know, that's perfectly fine too. All right. Thank you, John. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Anybody else here? All right. Last call before we wrap up for today. All right, guys. Well, hey, have a great week. I appreciate y'all being able to hop on here a day early. I'm uh, going to be out of town tomorrow. So it's kind of a last minute deal. But well, next week, we'll be back on uh, regular time on Thursday. So we'll see you then.